Bigan yn drio clych y syrfach ala ffart y beth, mae dyna'n rydgeu gymaid taringoch mi gain coachwch da hams yn greenwy. The coaching became like a bit of a national, natural progression. It's kind of something I fell into. I absolutely loved um, that aspect of the game. I think as a player, I was always a bit of a leader. Probably, um, you know, I went on to captain sides and, and it was always the part that interested me the most. So um, an opportunity came up to play a coach at Surrey Storm. Uh, back in the Super League in 2012 when I put my hand up and said I can do this um, and that was that really the rest was history and um, I obviously had that experience uh, for a few seasons at Storm before I headed off and, and set up the new club at Wasps um, and then you know having won um, Super League I think it's four times in a row um, I sort of said right I need a, a little bit of a break I wanted to see the next challenge and then uh, the amazing opportunity came up in Scotland. Ha tams yn effeithio'n y driach gan y daff arst, y cleich agos y cwtsioc, rwy'n dweud corym gyd yn yrdys o'n y bawl un eichgyn. In the last 20 years, the change, the growth of the game has been huge. From everything on the court to off the court, so on the court in terms of the level of play, the fitness, the technicalities, the skill, the uh, tactical stuff that's been introduced into the game has been huge. And, and off the court, the brand of the sport um, has been immense in terms of, of the commercial, influence we have now, um, everything down to fan engagement, to live games on Sky. You know, I, I saw all that transition. My first ever Super Cup final back in 2004 was in front of 50 people in, in a Blackpool sports hall. Uh, and, you know, fast forward to my last ever Super League final with Wasps in front of 6,000 sellout at the Copper Box live on Sky. Um, you know, it doesn't even compare. So I think it's been a real roller coaster of a ride, but um, an amazing journey to be part of and to see those changes. Y lorach yn dda o gwylon, bo'n corym driach priaf coach yn y holop y thysels rof a legal y ffolof dy hamsyn. I'd, I'd sort of tick the box domestically. I would, I'd, you know, I'd played across three different teams. I coached at two different ones and I'd sort of gone, right, what is this next challenge? What does that look like? And, you know, to coach internationally is the dream, isn't it? It's the, the cream of the crop to actually get to that level. Um, you know, and it was sort of for me at that time, one door closed, another one opened. I got the call from, from Claire Nelson and from Karen Atkinson, both at, at Scotland. And, so I said, do you want to talk? And I went, yeah, I do. Um, and, you know, it was it was a bigger picture as well, because uh, not only do I get the international experience, I get to work with with the quality, uh, the quality people. And, and those two have been amazing for me. I think a lot of the time when you get to that level and you get to work with people, it's about the right fit. And they were definitely the right fit for me in terms of what they want to achieve off the court and on the court with Thistles and and the challenge they've given me, which is um, which is amazing. How she comes in a dream account together. Gydych nhw ddyr ran y COVID y cilwch o groco ddaeth gyffeirf miasyn mys da hachyd i cyrst ddys yn sgipyd. I got to meet them a couple of weeks ago, which is really nice because I said it's been like the longest in, in introduction in history, I think. Uh, yeah, I, the plan was to actually go up in March just as COVID and lockdown started to happen and I was a bit sort of dubious because I'm, I'm based down south in England, so it was like I was going to have to fly up. So we sort of said, you know what, we'll leave it a few weeks and we'll come up. And those few weeks turned into a few months and the rest is history, as everybody knows. So um, I inherited a squad of 31 players. I've been being totally honest. I only knew sort of probably five or six of them by actual playing and face and name. So it's been really interesting getting to know people. We've, we've been adapting. We've, we've had Zoom calls and we've had online sessions and they've been sending me um, videos on WhatsApp all across the summer. So we've been able to implement some programs but it's nothing like actually getting to meet them, seeing how they all mesh together and selecting the squad that I want moving forward. So um, fingers crossed over the next few weeks, that will start to change again. And, and as things are starting to move slowly, um, you know, we're, we're looking at, at getting that squad picked for moving forward. A COVID is back in a hot chip ball lean. The three of us are the video of the sport of the sport of the sport of the sport of the It's had a huge impact on the sport. Um, you know, everybody behind the scenes has been working tirelessly to make sure things are happening. I think there's the, the full logistics in terms of planning has become impossible because every time you take one step forward, you take two steps back. You know, we talk about the international calendar. We've not been able to put anything in place. The last time I think the Thistles played was after at the 2019 World Cup. You know, so it's a huge amount of time. We'd have had two or three internationals at this point already in 2020. So things like the planning has been hard. Um, Things like trying to find facilities in space and, and this has done a great campaign in trying to um, connect with out, outside sources and businesses and companies and anybody that has local space that we can put netball courts on. And, and this is a big push, you know, moving forward, we, we're going to need 
more areas that we can play the sport on. So there's been some challenges and it, and it will continue. And, and of course, revenue is the huge thing. Uh, there's been a big push for, for members to re-sign and that's something I've done, hands up. I've signed myself up, I've signed my daughter up. We're, we're all members because it's, it's really important that at some point sport will get back to normal and, and life will re return to normal. And so you want to make sure that things like netball are still there when it does happen. Hatams and half the Gulakugan skipper, a Yanyan at Dulang, let Tarakajan in the Bielu, because an earth is a smoor, a Yanu. I think we had discussions about, you know, rankings and where we want to sit in the world. I think the biggest thing for me is matching the ranking that Scotland have had with the level of competition that they play. So, you know, going into a World Cup, if you're ranked in that top 10, which is incredible, you know, making sure you finish in that, in that position coming out, or not if not better. And I think that's what's really important is that it's not just sort of words on a paper, but actually when you come up against some of those African and Caribbean nations that you can perform in the, in the big arenas. And so, um, you know, pulling together the right calendar and making sure players get plenty of opportunities against the different styles and that you don't go into those competitions blind is really important. Also sort of providing a new culture for the team as well. Um, I've been lucky enough to come through the changes at England where we used to get smashed by Australia and New Zealand by 40 goals. So it's the first time we ever beat them in 25 years. And then to see England go on and actually win in big competition. So I think there's elements of that that I want to bring together that nothing is unattainable. It's just about changing mindsets and changing cultures.